This is the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. This is our 56th meeting. First of all, I'd like to take the opportunity at the National Night, uh, night Out the other night to welcome, I mean, to thank the members that showed up that night. Of course, Carrie Terrell did. Uh, our, our staff member, Derek Hart, did. Uh, Daniel, thank you very much for showing up. I appreciate it very much. Um, Omar, thank you very much. Um, Betty uh, Sheffelbaum did also. She's our chairman, and I showed up. It was a very nice night. It was very pleasant, and um, there was an awful lot of people at Riverwalk that night, and I think it was very successful. I would like to call the meeting to order now. I would like to have the adoption of the agenda. Would you all, all be, uh, review the agenda listing and adopt the agenda before proceeding? I make a motion to adopt the agenda in a minute. Thank you. Could I? Uh, thank excuse you. Excuse me, the agenda. Uh, the minutes are, are, we've had a minute to read and everything of August the 19th meeting are provided for you on your consideration. Could I have a minute, a motion to adopt or correct or reject the minutes? I have a correction. Okay. I was present at the last meeting and a mark absent. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. Hart, will you take care of that? Yeah, that's an easy fix. Okay, could we have a motion without adjustment on it, please? The adoption? I make the motion to adopt the correction to our minutes. Okay. At this time, we will have uh, comments from our liaison, Dr. Washington, please. Okay. Um, is the motion still on the floor or has it carried? Has the motion carried? Sorry, the minutes? Minutes. It yes, was it I made the motion. Yes. It was handed. I, okay. Yes. Um, my apologies for that. I'm sorry I didn't hear. Um, I just want to say to the, um, the committee members, thank each and every one of you that was able to participate in the national night out. I know that there was um, very much concern whether or not if it was going to happen because of COVID-19 and um, the impact that it's been having on Jacksonville. So the decision to move forward, um, it was a little bit unorthodox from what we were used to, but still I think for the committee members that was able to come out and to participate, thank you for your service and those that could not, thank you for the fact that you thought about coming out, but for whatever reasons that you were unable to. So um, from my understanding, it went as well as it could have gone and next year, Hopefully things will be much better that um, National Night Out will be in its original form that we can really service the community and bring our service to their awareness. So thank each and every one of you for your commitment. Thank you, Dr. Washington. This time I will turn the program over to um, uh, Carrie. Thank you very much. What I would like to do tonight is to start uh, the committee out a little bit with reiterating some information that was passed to residential customers uh, through the council meetings. Um, this is the month that the sanitation collection rates will change uh, effectively on your, your uh, water bill. So I wanted to make sure that we give not only the members but the residential customers the reasons why we see this change as far as the, the sanitation bill is concerned. And let me give you a little history about the recycling program. Uh, for the last 10 years, Sunoco Recycling has been the contractor where we've taken our recyclables to at the MRF and they do the processing and separating and so forth. And they also take, um, uh, do the marketing of those materials uh, for, the, for the city of Jacksonville. Uh, for the past 10 years, uh, we have not, we've been under a contract where we have not paid any funds for our recycling. Uh, it's been very good and we have done, a, I think, an exceptional job as far as the materials we collected and how we have cleaned up the contamination in our recycling stream. The Sunoco contract ends October 31st, 2021, and um, the recycling business has changed considerably since the last 10 years that we have uh, been in, been in uh, a contract with Sunoco. Uh, the changes that have occurred have been 
the problem with mixed glass. I think everyone knows we recycle brown, green, and, and clear glass, and that has been a considerable headache to uh, recycling facilities based on the difficulty in marketing those materials. We, we collect recyclables single stream, and that means everything is thrown into that, that blue container that you have together, and that container is taken to the MRF, the Material Recovery Facility, and they do the source separating for us. Well, as you know, glass is simply hard to separate. And also, too, the, the mixed glass is hard to sell because it's hard to recycle, plain and simple. Uh, the recycling industry has also had some issues with contamination. Uh, a lot of times in different areas, things are put in the recycling bin or get to the, the MRF to be recycled that aren't recyclable. And so the MRF has to separate that material, and then they have to take that material uh, up to the landfill in order to dump it into the landfill and not use it as recyclable material. And that's an additional manual expense for them to have to, to, have to do. Also, too, the, the domestic and international markets have changed considerably. Uh, one of the reasons has been uh, China. Uh, initially, we have taken most of our stuff, and China has accepted most of the materials, but they stopped accepting materials that are contaminated and they've been really selective and that had a kickback in affecting not only the international markets but the domestic markets as well. And also in, in doing that it has caused recyclable materials, some recyclable materials, not to be as, as valuable as they were in the past. Um, and the recycling processors nationwide, not only here in Jacksonville, but they were forced to adjust uh, to stay viable in the market that they were in. Uh, because of the low prices they were getting for recyclable materials, they had to come up with a way to make sure that they remain viable in the industry. Um, we have a new contract now with Sunoco, and that contract begins November 1st. Uh, that contract uh, takes into consideration, and this is a term that, that a lot of us have not heard of yet, uh, the average value of the recyclable materials. And they've used that concept to construct the present, not the present, but the contract that we're going to start November 1st in order to have the not only the processor, which is Sunoco, but the generator, which is the city, share in the cost of recycling. And, and the future slides will show you how that's, that's going to be done. Uh, this is an example of what the monthly charge is going to be uh, through Sunoco. Sunoco's processing fee for this first eight months of the contract, and the contract runs for two years and eight months. And eight months is only because we're starting it in November. It's going to end in June 30th of 2022, and then we start a two-year contract with them. So the contract is initially for two years and eight months. For the first eight months, Sunoco's processing fee to the city is going to be $95 per ton. Now, the first thing you think about is, wow, $95 per ton, but that's where we start. Uh, when we talk about the average value of the recyclables, Sunoco proposed, and the city's in agreement to do that, we take not only their processing fee, but we take the average value of the recyclables that we send to them and deduct that average value from the $95 processing fee and that figure is multiplied by the number of tons that we take to the recycling facility each month, and that's what we pay Sunoco. And I'll give you an example of that as we go on. Um, this is a, a, a chart that will show you how we get to the average value of the recycled materials. Now, please understand that the value per ton and the weighted value is something that I thought of in order to do this but the percentage by weight is act, the actual percentage by weight in a residential waste stream for recyclables, okay? Now, as you can see, mixed paper, cardboard, and unfortunately glass uh, amount to a large percentage of that recycling stream. And what they do is they take the percentage and the value per ton and come up with a weighted value for that cardboard material. If you look at the top line for the cardboard material, and then you add those figures up on the far right-hand side to get a total, which is the total value of those, the average value of those recycled materials that have taken to the, to the, uh, the MRF. 
As you can see in the diagram now, contamination in glass, glass is not profitable. Uh, the recycling facilities have to pay to dispose of the glass. And as you can see, they take, they take off for the contamination because they have to take the contaminated materials and ship those contaminated materials to the landfill. They pay a price for it to go to the landfill, okay? <clears throat> this is what, this is what um, the new rates are going to be as far as the, the, the service is concerned. And it's not as high as what was proposed by the departments, but it does help in offsetting the cost of what we have to pay to process the recycling materials. Remember initially I talked about the $95 processing fee that Sunoco charges the city minus the average value of the recycling materials, mm -hmm. and that's what we're going to pay Sunoco uh, as far as their fee is concerned, their monthly fee is concerned. So right now, the present fee for the residential customer is $10 fee, which is the collection fee, and $6 for container fee, $6 per container. And what that $6 is, that $6 is the disposal fee that we pay to the landfill. And the residential part is going to change. The collection part is going to change $2. So instead of $10, the, the collection rate will be $12, but the disposal charge will stay the same. On the small business side, again, we have a $10 previous fee. That fee is gonna to change to $12. So their collection fee will be $12 and their disposal cost will be $7.25. So we're looking at a new rate for residential customers of $18 if they have just one trash can. And for the commercial business, if they have one trash can, it's gonna be $19.25. Now. The residential customers, as everyone knows, you can have more than one can. You can have up to two cans. So if you're a residential customer that has two cans, you're, you're looking at $24 as far as your monthly payment is concerned. Okay? That is going to be effective October 1st, and I think, um, I don't know exactly how the water billing cycle runs, but residential customers should be getting notifications of the new rates through their, through their water bill. Some, some things that I'd like to remind the, the customers that are looking, excuse me, does, does anybody have any questions about that, about the charge that's going to be on the, the water bill for the collection cost? Anybody have any questions at all about that? Well, most of your costs will pass on to the resident and the business, or will the city actually bear an additional cost? Now, ma'am, what it is is that cost for recycling will be bared by the residential customer. That's the reason why there's a $2 additional fee on their collection cost. That's gonna be borne by the, the residential customer. Okay. All right. Now there are also gonna be some changes and I didn't mention that because we don't, we don't have a lot of commercial customers here, but this is also going to affect the commercial customer that we do recycling for. So it's not just something that's going to be borne by the residential customer as far as the expense is concerned. The commercial customers are also gonna have rate changes um, in their water bill. I don't wanna go into detail about that because some of our recycling customers have dumpsters and some have roll out cans and it gets to be a little complicated in trying to, to get that done. But I wanted to get this out for our residential customers to let them know and what to expect as far as their bill is concerned. <clears throat> Just a reminder, uh, about recyclable materials. This is just to tell you about the plastics, the metals, the paper and the glass. Preferably, you know, we'd like for it to be clean. Uh, rinse it out if you can. And just understand these are the materials that the recycling uh, facility will take and, and can potentially, except for the glass, make a little, little profit on as far as their, their um, operational cost is concerned, okay? Again, which is great, it says on the right-hand side, if you see it, uh, when in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what you need to do. If you don't, don't know if it's recyclable or not and you don't have the opportunity to call the sanitation division or go online because this information is online on the city website and you're still not aware of or whether or not it's recyclable, can't get in touch with anyone, it's best to just go ahead and throw it in the garbage and be done with it. Because if you don't, 
then the recycling guys will go there and they'll look at it and they'll say, nope, we're not going to pick this up and you won't get your recyclables picked up, okay? This is some don'ts. Uh, I think most of us, the city of Jacksonville, and, and I have to say this, the city of Jacksonville, through the council and through two programs that we had while I was sanitation superintendent, have done an excellent job of cleaning up our recycling, our recycling waste stream. We've had programs where we have emphasized to the residential customer about what needs to be recycled. I think some of you remember we've had um, programs where we had to go re-educate residential customers because what we recycled changed. Um, a couple of years back, I think everyone remembered pizza boxes. You know, we could recycle pizza boxes, but we had to go and, and re-educate residential customers about pizza boxes and how it's contaminated if it has cheese on it or grease or whatever, that kind of thing. And we've done, we've done I think, an excellent job in cleaning up the recycling waste stream and um, uh, participating in the recycling program. Aerosol cans, aluminum foil, batteries, uh, ceramic items, these are all things that uh, are not recyclable. Look on the website, and this information is on the website. Uh, again, if you don't want to take the time and effort to go to the website, 938-5338 is the sanitation division. They'll be more than happy to let you know what's recyclable and what's not recyclable. That's, that's part of their job. Um, also remember that it's important <clears throat> place items in the recycling container loose. Don't, don't bag them up. Those thin plastic bags only jam up the conveyor belts. Um, and then if they don't jam up the, the, uh, the belts, then some individual has to go and open those bags up and dump that material out, which slows the processing pro uh, process. So, you know, uh, loosely in the container uh, and do not bag those things up. Okay. Anybody have any questions about, yes, ma'am. Do you have to take the labels off of them, off of the containers? Yes, ma'am, if you can, that would be good to, to take the labels off the containers because some, somewhere somebody's going to have to do that. Right. Yes, ma'am. Yes. The caps off the bottles? Beg your pardon? Caps off the bottles. The caps also, too, it would be good to take those off because a, a lot of people don't understand that the caps on the top of the bottles are made from a completely different kind of plastic. Oh, okay. And when you go through the recycling process, different plastics melt at different temperatures. Mm -hmm. And the harder it is to melt a plastic, the more expensive it is in the process of doing that. And the less money a, a, a seller will make as far as that's concerned. Okay. If a recyclable bin, like if you come to my house and I've got a pizza box in there and you can't recycle that, do, does your men then let me know as a consumer that um, you're leaving that thing, my, my tray or whatever it is, my uh, bin. The, bin, because it's not recyclable and it, the reason why, or do you just leave it there with no answer on it or anything? They have a little sticker, ma'am. It's do. called an oops sticker. Okay. Yes, ma'am. And it'll tell you why they didn't That's take good. the recycling material. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Does cost is the same for small business and residential? And it might be due to size, but it kind of gives the impression that a residential home produces the same amount of recyclable materials as a small business. Is that the case? Is that why the cost is equal? Okay, now, there, there's not an identical cost, residential versus small business. If, let me see, and I'll go back a little bit, and I'll show you a little bit. <clears throat> if you look at the small business, the, the rate for disposal, which is $75.25 for the container, the reason why that's more than what it is for a residential uh, customer is because small businesses produce more garbage, the disposal cost. And that's why they're charged more for the disposal cost. Okay. okay. And then one more question. Can you go back to the chart where you showed the um, percentage and the cost? Okay. I think it was the slide before this. You want this chart? Correct. Mm -hmm. And the glass doesn't elicit a net profit for anybody. Is it still cost effective to have them haul it to the landfill as opposed to us just putting it in the trash can? 
Well, <clears throat> the reason why we didn't go head over heels in trying to eliminate the glass, because it's, it's simply difficult to do. We've had two iterations or whatever where we have tried, we have retrained, and that's a bad word, but I'll use that word, residential customers about what's recyclable, and we've gotten into the vein of recycling the glass, and so um, we kept it that way. Um, the MRF, they'll take it, they'll process it, they're just not making any money out of it. Okay. Go ahead. So it is kind of breaking even. The, what the cost for them to take it is what is canceling out their processing. Because I can't imagine they do it for free. I mean, they're they're essentially doing it because they're they're breaking even. Is that the case? I mean, no, no, they're not. When you say breaking even, that's that, that's kind of sort of not the right word to use. Unfortunately, <clears throat> the first ten years that we were recycling, because of our contract. They had to take it, okay, because that's the way we had it set up. This time, they're using that as far as the average value is concerned to deduct it from what they would charge the, our, us for the tonnage. So it is being deducted in there. There's, it's not a break-even thing. Someone's paying the cost for it, and we're paying the cost for it in the average value. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Any, any further questions? And again, this is, <clears throat> I know that the Jacksonville residents are fully aware of, of what's recyclable, what's not recyclable. I felt it was important <clears throat> because this month the rates changed that we reiterate what council has already disseminated to the, to the residential customers just to make sure that they'll be aware of that because sometimes people listen but don't listen and I didn't want people to get that on their bill and say, oh my God, what is this now? That kind of thing. So I think this is important to just make sure that um, people understand why why this is happening and uh, the reason for it. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Will there ever be a cap put on how much we are going to pay a company for recycling? Will there ever be a cap? about doing ourselves or say everything else and you say China goes up, up, up. Have you ever thought about what will be the ceiling? Uh, well, cap? I don't think that there's ever going to be a cap uh, because we have um, promoted recycling so much that it is, it is something I think that's here to stay and it'll be here to stay. And there are very few, if you, if you look in our area, there are very few uh, material recovery facilities that we can deal with and negotiate with. In fact, in this area, Sunoco is the only one. So we're faced with the situation of, of negotiating with, with Sunoco in good faith and trying to come to a, a happy medium that benefits both parties. Okay. Any, any further questions? And we don't want this stuff to go in the landfill. It's a way of avoiding the landfill. Yes, ma'am. Everything not is um, is not eternal, and the landfill is certainly not eternal. And uh, people really need to understand that by recycling, uh, we're doing a couple of things. We are saving space in the landfill, and the other thing is that <clears throat> we're taking material and reusing that material because it's it's being recycled. And I think as we, as the industry goes along, uh, they'll find ways of making more containers recyclable. Uh, it's easiest to dispose of. That way it'll be beneficial for everyone. But I think it, it's, it's going to take time. Okay. okay. I'm going to turn this over to Derek now to, to give you an update on the uh, adopter program. I appreciate you showing up tonight and braving the weather. Um, and I appreciate you 
come and listen to me too for, for a couple minutes. Uh, I don't have much for you today uh, other than just to update you on any changes to the program since the last time we met. Um, Field Medical Training Battalion um, has uh, applied and been approved for Liberty Drive. It's a street that they had previously adopted, uh, so they are renewing their adoption. Um, and since it's a military affiliated organization, they would fall under that two year agreement. And the Fisher family um, have adopted Iverly Lane, uh, a portion of Iverly Lane. Um, that's a uh, private um, folks, so that they have entered a, a three year agreement. Uh, and both of these agreements um, are fairly recent that have just happened in the past couple weeks. So I was pretty happy to, uh, to get those through and back and, and out to them. As far as this committee's um, adopt a street program with uh, Court Street and College Street, uh, we have some, some dates up there. And what we had agreed to was the last Saturday of each quarter uh, conducting a cleanup. However, uh, with our first cleanup going in November, uh, as we, um, as you know, that last weekend in November is Thanksgiving. Um, so we backed it up a week um, and we're, we've targeted uh, November 20th at 9 a.m. Um, so if you're willing to come out uh, November 20th, uh, meet us at the corner of Court and College Street. Uh, Mr. Terrell and myself would be more than happy to, to have you come walk up and down the, those two streets with us and Make sure it's looking good. Okay. Nothing else. Pretty down the street unless you guys have any questions. Will you be having the trash cans, the gloves, and the things that you bring, pick up uh, trash? Yes, with? I will bring gloves and uh, the trash bags. Mm -hmm. All that will be provided. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. What I'd like to do now is um, talk about the clean and green Star Awards and just <clears throat> let you know the, the Star Award winners for the residential part of the, the awards program. This is 402 Nelson Drive. Um, the next one is 228 Campbell Place. This is number 12 Warlick Street. And this is 313 Greenbrier Drive. And as you can see, you know, these residents are very well taken care of. They look very nice. And it's, um, you know, it, it, it makes Jacksonville look, look exceptionally well. And we, we appreciate the effort and time that these residential customers put into to taking care of their properties. The commercial side, this is 239 New Bridge Street. Uh, which is very nicely done, as you can see. Mm -hmm. um, excellent work taking care of the property. And this is what we're looking for, okay? <clears throat> the other thing I'd like to talk about real quick before we get to the end is um, tree board. We need to probably have a meeting this month as far as the tree board is concerned. Um, I think December 15th, is the is when the application for the Arbor Day needs to be in, and uh, we'll just with the, at that meeting we'll just discuss the application and applying for the uh, Arbor Day award and making sure that we get our ducks in a row to get that information sent off. Okay, mm -hmm. so I just want to make sure that the tree board members are aware and and uh, we will we'll slate it for the end of this month. Okay. Let me just talk a little bit about National Night Out, which I think was, you know, for our first time, I think it was successful. I think everyone had a good time. This is just pictures of some of the members. This is not all of the members now because I, it got dark and I didn't take pictures of everybody, but <clears throat> this is what our booth looked like. This is some of the members. And this is 
kind of the tri board that we had out front. Uh, you can't see it very well, but this, it goes into the, the purpose of what the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee's purpose is. We have some of the programs that we do, the Memorial <clears throat> and Honors Program, Freedom Fountain, uh, the Star Wars. Those are some of the things that we hope to bring out to the, um, the people that we're at National Night Out. Okay. I think it was, again, successful. Little do we know, we, um, <clears throat> we distributed 105 water jugs, or water bottles, or whatever you want to call them. We did, um, we had little packets of wildflower seeds. We did over 300 of those. And then we had um, the plastic bags that we gave out to customers. We did about 100, 150 of those. So I think it was, I think it was nice. I think it was beneficial and uh, a chance to, to meet people in the community. Okay. There was a lot of interest there too. Yes, ma'am. That's very, yes, ma very rewarding. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and the young children. <laughs> yeah. And again, uh, thank you to the members that were there. Um, we talked a lot. We got to know each other a lot. We talked to other people, like uh, interacting with the public. And I think I think that was very beneficial. I think it was. Okay. Thank you very much. I'll turn it over to the chairman. Much. Would anybody else like to say anything? Our next meeting will be, our re next regular meeting will be at 6 o'clock on Thursday, December the 2nd, at 6 o'clock. Our other meetings will be February the 3rd, 2022, at on April the 14th uh, also. Do we have any other business, any business before the meeting? Can I hear for an adjourn uh, adjournment? I move that we adjourn. Okay, got a second. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.